So I've been in some pretty sketchy situations over the years backpacking, whether it's just nature slapping me in the face or me making some really dumb decisions while I'm out there. There's always stories to tell about bad experiences that you have on the trail. Not every trip will go perfectly and that's what this video is about. This video is all about adapting and making the best out of the bad situations that you inevitably will encounter while backpacking. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Bryce. I do a lot of backpacking and luckily for you, I video all my backpacking trips and put them online so I have beautiful b-roll to throw up with all my examples from these trips because I've actually filmed everything that I'm going to be talking about today. So I want to give you guys some tips on what I've learned over the years of what not to do and how to deal with bad situations while out in the backcountry. And these are my experiences. I'm going to link all the videos above. Uh, so if you guys want to see the original videos, uh, you can click above and it'll, it'll go into your watch later playlist or, or wherever it goes and uh, you guys can check that out for yourself. My first hand accounts, what I've learned, so let's jump right into it. So the very first thing I wanna talk about is dealing with non-life threatening situations. So these are situations that um, are pretty mild. With all the things that can happen to you when you're out backpacking and hiking, uh, these are things that are not going to kill you for the most part. So I'm talking about like weather that makes you mildly uncomfortable or severely uncomfortable, um, body fatigue, um, bugs, all things that are not a huge deal breaker to backpacking but can suck. So I, I think I have two experiences I wanna talk to you about this one. So the first one I wanna talk about is when I backpacked in Canyonlands National Park in Utah. So we experienced some really, really high winds. I think it was like 30 plus mile an hour winds which actually felt way, way uh, faster than that but uh, it's, it's the highest winds I've ever camped in uh, by a long shot. Uh, my tent was blown all around. I had a single, single trekking pole, uh, non-freestanding tent, so it wasn't um, doing too well in the wind. It did hold up, but uh, it was blown all over the place. It was very hard to set up, and in the night, sand was blowing up under it, like inside my tent all night long. This could be a life-threatening situation depending where you were. We were in the desert. It was February, but it was still not super cold. Um, what makes this non-life-threatening is that I was with a lot of people that had other tents. Like, there were, there was places for me to sleep if my tent would have failed. So this could be bad, but it wasn't for me. But uh, what I wanna talk about in situations like this, which is like a type two fun um, activity, which type one fun being like, oh, this is awesome, this is sweet. Type two fun being, this sucks. And then the next day you wake up and you think, man, I hiked 100 miles, I fell down a waterfall, got my leg chewed off by a bear. What a great memory. <laughs> That was a really, really bad example, but you know what I mean. So it's like you look back at it and the memory is sweet and, and you just want to do it again. I like to call this type two fun adapting. So basically when you're in the moment and you know you're not um, going to die and you're just kind of having kind of a bad time out there, uh, you want to adapt to that type two fun. You have to realize that that's what it is, that this is going to be a cool memory which I think about that a lot. Anytime I'm in a bad situation, I think this is this is gonna be sweet when I look back on it. It might suck now, but it's gonna be sweet. I've actually gotten really, really good at type two fun adapting. Um, like for an example, something I always think about. So I run ultra marathons. A lot of people when they run at the beginning of a race, you think this is great, I feel good. And by the end of the race, you think this sucks. I want it to be over now. With me, I put myself in type two fun situations so much that I actually craved a little bit of pain. So when I run an ultra, I don't really enjoy or feel that great in the beginning of the race. All I'm thinking about like eight, nine, 10 miles in is I cannot wait till I get to mile 20 and start feeling that tightness in my legs, start feeling that pain a little bit. Like that's when it makes me feel alive. That's something that you really have to learn. The more you put yourself in bad situations, the better you will get. But I digress. So back to Canyonlands, high winds, I'm getting sand pummeled in my face in the middle of the night. And a lesser person would have hated it. I was loving it. I actually was loving it. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, I had offers to sleep in another tent, and I'm like, no, I'm like, this is cool. <laughs> like, I'm, I wanna experience this. So anyway, 
You have to find in situations like this, what I like to call, we'll call it the BPS, the best possible solution. So when you have a problem, you have to figure out of what gear you have and your knowledge base, like what is the best thing I can do to overcome this right now? So in my tent, getting pummeled um, with sand in my face, it was too hot to pull my sleeping bag over my face. It was too hot, like I would have, been just sweating and completely uncomfortable. So my best possible solution for this was to take my little windbreaker and pull it over my face. And then I put my sleeve over my mouth. So I had like a breathing tube. Uh, it let me breathe. It was nice and cool. And it kept the sand off my face. Worked out great. But that's what I'm talking about. Something that you, you just kind of have to calm down, keep calm, and think about what the best possible solution is for these small problems. Another one I wanna talk about, this goes way back to 2016, I backpacked in Shawnee, uh, Shawnee State Park, I think it's a state park, in uh, Southern Ohio. I got infested with ticks. Uh, this was by far my most uncomfortable trip I've ever been on. I've made several videos about this. I was covered in ticks, it was terrible. I've talked about this in so many videos. All I'm going to say, the only lesson to be learned from this is you have to know when to quit. When I got home, it took me over three hours to pull all these little baby ticks off of my body. I could have not done that uh, out in the wilderness. So knowing when to quit is huge. Like I said, the best possible solution for my situation was to get the hell out of there and address this problem not while camping. That leads me into actually when I was in the Smoky Mountains with a few other guys, Dan Becker was out there, his stuff got soaked in his backpack, his Hyperlite Mountain Gear waterproof backpack. I have a Hyperlite, mine's never gotten wet inside, like it's one of those things that you cannot completely depend on your gear to work all the time. Uh, his stuff got soaked and he weighed his pros and his cons, like what, what he was gonna do that night and he picked the best possible thing he could which was to hike out in the middle of the night and dry his gear and then he came back uh the next day but he could have like he could have froze to death it was a very serious situation so he made the right call on that one for sure so that leads me into that same trip for my bad experience which was uh gear failures or lack of gear probably in my case so that trip was just really cold and it wasn't really the cold that got me it was the fact that it rained for the entire first day, soaked a lot of our gear, and then uh, snowed and froze that night and the next day. It, it was just, um, it was definitely a lot wetter of a cold trip. You have cold trips that are dry and like the snow's not, not real wet, uh, but when it's raining and it's into the 20s and the teens, that is really scary. So like I said before, I I live for type 2 fun. That That's why a lot of my videos you'll see I won't take a lot of gear or I won't take a lot of clothing when it's cold, which I'm about done with that. <laughs> like I've, I've messed up a lot of times. But um, yeah, so I, I like to go out and I like that variable changes. I like I like seeing what happens and being able to figure out how to overcome these these little things, but um, on that trip, I wore like trail runner shoes and uh, my feet were soaked. I brought lots of extra socks and stuff, but uh, they soak through really quick when your shoes are wet. In hindsight, that was not smart at all. So basically what I was doing uh, was I was depending on fire on that trip. I knew it'd be cold. My feet get numb a lot. They, they're usually good. They warm up when you get in your quilt anyway, but I kind of expected that we would have fires. Having four guys in that trip, I just knew that we'd be trying to make fire. Um, it was very difficult. Uh, the second night, uh, everything was really wet. The first night, we didn't even have a fire because it was just raining the whole time. So I didn't account for the fact that we probably wouldn't have good fires at all and could not uh, warm my feet up really well on that trip. So looking back, um, you have to prepare your gear really, really well for these trips. And preparation leads me on to my next point, which arguably might be my most embarrassing one. So we're talking preparing in logistics, planning for the area you're going to and knowing what you're getting into when you go somewhere. So heading out to Dolly Sods Wilderness in West Virginia, uh, I pretty much got lost out there. So I, I was going with a bunch of other YouTubers, it was gonna be fun. We're in a group chat 
and I I wasn't even active in the group chat. I was just gonna wing it. I didn't even bring a map. I've been there a lot. So Dolly Sods, really, really easy place to get lost if you've never been there, if you don't know the area. A um, lot of side trails that aren't marked. Uh, honestly, all the trails aren't like marked per se with blazes, but every trail that's on the map has signs at every like intersection. So, I mean, I've been there a lot. I've hiked nearly all of those trails. So I was feeling very confident, which kind of wasn't smart. I, I went to a trailhead that I never started at before, and it was only a mile away from trails that I've been on. So it didn't feel like uh, uncharted territory for me. I'm not gonna go into this deep because I have the trip video and I have a full explanation video of how I got lost and how ironic it was that I even found the people that I was meeting down there because they had changed plans and I didn't even know about it. So the fact that I found them was a miracle. But anyway, I got lost. I started out on a trail that wasn't even a trail um, and I lost sunlight. I started trying, I turned around and started booking uh, for my truck back at the parking lot and I'm running, I'm getting scraped up, tore up, uh, dolly sods. If you are in those balds where there's no trail, um, it's just tons of rocks and, and bushes and it, it was really, really hard, but I'm running through this. I mean, semi freaking out, just trying to get back. And then it got dark. So I had a couple choices. Uh, one being put a headlamp on, get back to my car, get back to my truck, because I knew at that point what my mistake was. I knew I was at the wrong trailhead. Uh, but anyway, I could have put the headlamp on and potentially got more lost. So this brings me to a really, really le good lesson that, um, you know, I learned. I. I um, solidified uh, my belief in it, and that is to keep calm uh, when you're in these situations. So at this point in the day, I still kind of knew where I was, and I knew that if I just set up my tent and waited till the sun came up and got my bearings, had some time to calm down and think about it, uh, I would probably make better decisions. So even like in normal life, when somebody says something that triggers you, you have like a reactive response and then you have like an actual response. So most of the time when we're triggered, we immediately react uh, with something that we later will say like, oh, I can't believe I said that, or I shouldn't have said that. Uh, you always wanna step away from the situation, come back and give a well thought out response. So me setting up my tent at night, sleeping on it, which was the worst night of sleep I've ever had, just because I was so worked up and worried about it. Um, it, it, it really wasn't that bad of a situation, but I'm telling you, you get a little bit lost and the panic comes in very, very, very easily. And I, I played it off well in the video. You really can't tell, people say they can tell, but <laughs> You, you can see it on my face a little bit. But anyway, um, you get your bearings, you, you make informative decisions whenever you are calm and the sun is up. That helped me tremendously. Stay calm, plan your logistics for these trips. Like if it's somewhere, even when it's somewhere you've been a lot, you like I really took for granted the vastness of this place and the fact that I had been there a lot forgot about my beer and I was basically just gonna wing it and even though I had been there a lot classic Bryce didn't pay attention to the group chats and they had actually changed the trailhead where they met and um, it made for a little bit of a sketchy trip for me so that's pretty much all I want to talk about on this I literally could go on this topic all day like no joke plan your trips make sure you know everything about the place you're going uh, know your gear test your gear keep a calm mental attitude that is so so crucial in this and then in adapting to that type 2 fun be open-minded when dealing with bad weather bad bugs all that stuff that might be a cool story and a cool memory looking back at but really sucks in the moment so that's pretty much gonna do it guys thank you for watching uh, all these videos I'm actually going to link in the description below so if you want to check out the first hand uh, 
trips of these horrible experiences and uh, some of them are like my responses to the trips. If you wanna check them out, I'll put them down below. Uh, leave a comment with some of your bad trips. I did this kind of video a few years back and I have a lot bigger following now and I really wanna hear some of your stories of the worst situations you've ever encountered uh, while backpacking. Or if any of you have ever had any like near-death experiences, which thankfully I have not, um, I would really love to hear those stories. And all you guys uh, not planning on commenting, I'm sure this co comment section is going to be really, really informative. One of my last videos, I did a uh, backpacking solo video, like why I backpack solo and some of the pros and cons. And that comment section on that video blew up and there are so many great points on that, that that's just one of those videos that if you don't watch, just go read the comments. There's like if you're on the fence about hiking alone, like there's so much good information in that comment section. Um, that's kind of what I want this to be too. This is gonna be like, it's gonna be a lot of cool stories down there, I hope. But yeah, like I said, that's it. Uh, got a lot of cool trips up in the books. Wanna do some more bushcrafting. I think in true Brace fashion, I don't even know yet. <laughs> I think I'm going backpacking like tomorrow. I'm gonna do a solo. It's happening sa Saturday if it's not tomorrow. So within the next two days, I'll be doing a solo backpacking trip. Can't wait for that. That's gonna be a lot of fun. But hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss that video and future videos like this one. And yeah, leave your comments, hit that like button. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.